and welcome to the Pitch Side Podcast once again. I'm your host, the HD, the BSP. Like, share, comment on the YouTube version of this podcast and subscribe to the YouTube channel and enable notifications to receive all the updates from these episodes of the podcast, which you can listen to on Spotify or Google Podcasts or any other platform and all the content on the channel. Pitch Side Pod on Instagram, Sound BSP on Twitter, follow me there. Of course, help us on the way to our first K and welcome to this 110th episode where we're still covering the international break and the UEFA World Cup qualifiers. Join us for more. And you're welcome. It was another interesting day in the UEFA World Cup qualifiers. Six groups, um, you know, were in action yesterday. And we're going to kick off with the biggest, I think, um, you know, of those, the early kickoffs, in fact, of uh, Spain and, uh, you know, Spain and Georgia, and then France and France, Kazakhstan early on. Kazakhstan hosted France in Group D. And that, of course, was and of course, of course, it was a win for France because expectedly it would really see them going through uh, Kazakhstan 2 0. Mostly, it was a dominated game by France. It was a pretty pedestrian performance in the first half, it was pretty slow, I think, uh, from them. It didn't create a lot of chances in the first half, in particular, France. They weren't really that great in the first half, despite having possession. They were pretty much, you know, slow out of the blocks, but definitely they got going in the second half. There was some Changes to the side from the first game. Dom Bailey was a starter. Longley was a starter. Leo Dubois was a starter. Luca Dini was a starter. No, um, Novaran in the side. Kurt Zuma was a starter. Dangin Dom Bailey in the midfield of his, as I mentioned, Thomas Lamar and Anthony Martial. Although starting, he was out injured and was substituted, um, you know, for, uh, and he was substituted for Anthony Martial. Um, you know, Mr. Soko made, uh, the, made the appearance, of course, with Sam Ben Yedder made an introduction in the game, unlike the game against Ukraine when he didn't appear. Two goals to nil from France. It was a pretty, pretty sweet win, I would say. It felt pedestrian, yes, but again, I think mostly it was down to the fact that they got the job done in the first half, really. Um, you know, mostly uh, for France, Usman Dembele scored the first goal by the assist of Anthony Martial, and the second goal was an unfortunate own goal from Sergei Malier for France. That's definitely a better win for Le Bleu. Surely a motivational kind of win for, um, you know, for Didier Deschamps side. They needed a win after a disappointing performance against Ukraine that was a lot of, I think, a lot of criticism on um, on uh, on Didier Deschamps, really, for the way he played, for the way he sets up his side, his almost stubbornness in the way he chooses um, how his side plays in the game. But definitely, overall, it was a you know a much needed win. I'm not going to say much than that because it's it's Kazakhstan, really. It's not exactly the the hardest of opponents they will ever find in this group. Definitely, Ukraine is the number one sort of. Um, you know, rival, should I say? I mean, Bosnia has Gavini also has a chance, but definitely you have Ukraine as your strongest uh, test in this group. And speaking of them, uh, with 10 men, they managed to defeat uh, Finland, one, uh, managed to draw against Finland, one, all uh, Finland came back from a 1 0 down lead to equalize late on for Timo from the penalty spot. Um, with the red card for Mikolenko, one all for uh, Finland, uh, one all for Finland against Ukraine. A point shared between both sides. The both sides now have two points on the standings. A couple of draws for them uh, after the goal, of course, from Junior Moraes in the 80th minute, where it looked like Ukraine are going to be sneaking away with the win, really, uh, against Finland, but it wasn't to be. Timo Puki got the penalty late on after a late surge from Finland in the last 10 minutes or so. In attack, and he scored the equaliser, giving Finland the most important point. So far, two points for Finland, two points for Ukraine. They are behind France, and it's going to be really, really interesting to see how who's going to be the second spot in this group. Of course, for Ukraine, the next game is going to be against Kazakhstan. Um, you know, in the in the group for Finland, of course, the next game is going to be a friendly against Switzerland, who themselves are not going to be playing the next fixture of the qualifiers. But back to France, really. I'm not. I mean, I'm not seeing them having any trouble, really. I mean, again, it's. It's logically the fact that they're going to be topping the group, qualifying to the World Cup. I don't think there's going to be a problem about that. But definitely the way of playing is going to be annoying a lot of people. It's going to be 
come going on the nerves of a lot of people. It's going to be really, dis- dis- I mean, disappointing, I would say, for some people to watch France, the World Cup winners, playing like that. And definitely against the side, against side, these sides like Kazakhstan, all respect to Shevchenko and Ukraine side, but Ukraine as well, Finland in this group, you should be bossing this group. This should be a comfortable walk in the park, to be fair, for France. And it definitely should be something that, you know, France, um, you know, should should take easy on themselves. They shouldn't be exactly trying hard to play, um, you know, against these kind of things. They should be winning by any side, by any squad, by any first 11 they put. I mean... If if Deschamps is not exactly ready to put his best eleven for the Euros, which I don't think he has at the moment. I mean, he has the luxury of cho- of choice and luxury of options in in his side. But definitely, the Euros getting closer, and he needs to really put his side on notice if he wants to, um, you know, to you know, sort of revenge what happened in 2016 and be the favourites to win the Euros. They are, of course, one of the favourites to win said Euro and to win the next World Cup. So obviously, the generation in France has it all, in my opinion. And Didier Deschamps has the luxury of choosing who's going to be playing. This squad is just brilliant, and obviously, it needs a little bit, you know, um, it is a a bit more swagger in their game I think in the next couple of matches in the group so the next fixture of course for France it will be hosting Bosnia or, or traveling to Sarajevo to facing Bosnia and Herzegovina next in the third round for Kazakhstan uh, the next round will be facing Ukraine away from them as well as we mentioned of course with Finland playing a friendly against Switzerland a side that w- that wasn't Uh, A walk in the park for him, it's game, it was Spain, and yet with another troublesome performance and another hard time earning the win against Georgia. In fact, they were 1-0 down at halftime in Tashvili. It it definitely was, I mean, it was, it was dominated by Spain, but it was again, just like the first game against Greece, the kind of passive performance in fact in the first half Georgia would must the most dangerous team by a mile despite having only 20% of possession in the first half in the second half was more of the same but it was I think more defensive from Georgia to defend their lead because they thought they would have you know some sort of historic victory and um, they almost had a historic result for a while really like it was a really late goal that set Spain apart by Danny Olmo um, you know with the second half really being like Spain pushing really really hard to get this equalizer and the second goal um you know the starting line was different in this one again Diego Llorente was introduced Pedro Porro starting as the right back you know Fabian Ruiz starting Pedri and Brian Gill all getting some starts Alvaro Morata I think is the only consistent start one Sergio Busquets starting in the middle which you know anyway it, it, it it's wrong in Barcelona and it's still wrong in Spain really but he's one of the experienced players and he's the captain so he needs to do so as you don't have the luxury of you know Sergio Ramos uh, being on the bench, like benching Sergio Ramos, is you know quite the quite the big deal, really quite the feat when you bench someone like Sergio Ramos in this game, and you, you even don't uh, you know give him uh, a chance. Um, you know the the game again was really really rough. The first half was you know sort of tricky for Spain. They didn't create a lot. Georgia were the most dangerous side, and they scored in the uh, late on in the and the first half, thanks to um, you know Kravatskhelia, of course, uh, the goal coming you know pretty late and in a crucial time, I think, for Spain. But just as crucial, the equalizer from um, you know from Ferran Torres, thanks to Jordi Alba's assist. I think it was even more crucial, and it was at the right time in 56 minutes because because I think if Spain passed like 10 or 15 minutes in this in that second half without scoring that could have creeped in heavily into them and it could have really set some panic in, into them and even so with the one all result the panic was already there and Spain were really putting it all on the line Marcus Sorrenti was introduced Mikel Oyar Thambel was introduced um, already before the goal three changes were made by Enrique Alcantara was introduced Enigo Martinez was introduced Danny Olmo was introduced and of course one of them Danny Olmo made it and made the impact late on in the game in the 92nd minute uh, the goal 
Beautiful strike, by the way. It was impossible to save for the Georgian goalkeeper, Georgia Loria. Um, you know, the 92nd minute, again, a very deadly time. I would say, I mean, I would say overall because of, you know, Spain's stubbornness and respect to how the, the both teams plays and respect to who the team against them are. I think Georgia deserved at least a draw, really. I mean, they defended really well in the second half. I thought they had a terrific performance. They picked their moments to scored in the first half and I think you know they deserve to draw at least but when you have someone like Danny Olmo who could pull such a wonderful individual exploit I would say it's not going to be that you know that disappointing really uh, to see that happening 2-1 for Spain it's another victory of the jaws of death really another result of the jaws of death they you know they squandered the lead in against Greece they back from a lead against Georgia it it's it's tough like it's tough really for Spain at the moment in in their group and it's certainly um, you know could be very very tricky in the next couple of games they're not on top of course they're second behind Sweden who managed to defeat Kosovo 3-0 away from home Zlatan Ibrahimovic again with the assist in this one for the second goal for well, the first goal, sorry. Alexander Isak for the second. Sebastian Larsson from the spot managed to make it 3 0. It was a pedestrian walk for, um, you know, pedestrian walk in the park, really, for Sweden in that group. 3 0 for them. They topped the group with six points. Four goals con uh, scored, no goals conceded, two clean sheets. And it's going to be really, really interesting to see how uh, things are going to be put out when those two face each other. Um, you know, which in, which is going to be uh, in uh, June in the European Championship, in fact, because they're drawn in the same group. But obviously, we're talking about the World Cup qualifiers here. Sweden is going to be next against Estonia in the um, in an international friendly, while Kosovo is going to be hosting uh, or going to be traveling to face Spain. I mean, that should be three wins for three, that should be three points for Spain. Sorry, right? Like that should be an easy victory for Luis Enrique's side. You maybe I think after this uh, game against Georgia, after the game against Ukraine, uh, sorry against Greece, it's probably pretty doubtful that it will be an easy victory for Spain. You don't know about how what football um, gonna bring to you. Obviously, Kosovo is gonna be defensive in this one. Like there's no doubt about it. They will try to play very defensive. But definitely, Spain should have enough quality to just overpower them and maybe storm them into um, into victory in this one. So the standings in this group are like this. Sweden with six points, four points for Spain, one point for Greece, Georgia and Kosovo with no points. Moving on now and carrying on and to Group C now. Of course, we I think we, we skipped some alphabetic order there because we had Group B and D, which is the Spain and France one, and then you have C. Uh, Bulgaria lost to Italy 2-0. Another, um, you know, another impressive, another, com you know, economic, realistic sort of victory for Italy. They dominated the game. But Bulgaria was setting up well defensively. They didn't allow them more than those two goals. A goal from Andrea Belotti from the penalty spot in the uh, in the later parts of the first half in the 43rd minute, and a goal from Locatelli, a beautiful curler by the way, from uh, from Locatelli in the second half, two 0 for uh, Italy again. Another economic victory, another clean sheet. Um, you know, a very 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 um, you know well rounded, brilliant performance. You know, the this side is showing there's a lot of talent in this side really. Um, you know, they see the likes of Marco Verratti, you see the likes of Nicolo Borella, Stefano Sensi, Federico Acerbi, Spinazzola at the back, uh, you know, Federico Chiesa doing the uh, doing the bidding up forward, Andrea Bellotti being the starter with Immobile on the bench. You have, you know, again at the bench I would say Matteo Pessina, you have you have Vincenzo Grifo, you have Lorenzo Pellegrini. I mean, it's it's a promising squad for Italy, I would say. Um, definitely, the expectations for the Euros are not that big for Italy. Like, nobody's expecting Italy to win the Euros outright. But definitely, people are, are seeing Italy as a dark horse, as a sort of a team that could compete and could go far in that competition. 2-0 for Italy. Another economic victory that keeps them on top of the group. Six points only with goal difference. One goal difference ahead of Switzerland who defeated Lithuania. 1-0 the early goal from Churden Shakiri thanks to Beryl Mbolo's assist in a game completely dominated and outrightly uh, swept by Switzerland. 
in a big way against Lithuania. It was 21 shots, 9 on target, but only the early opportunity for Sheridan Shakiri from, Bre from Brelin Bolo's pass was into the net. It was, in fact, the first shot on target for Switzerland in the game. It was the goal, 1-0. It could have been more than that, and it should have been, but, you know, Lithuania put on a good defensive performance. What should we say? Um, six points for Italy and Switzerland on top of that group, of course, respectively, with goal differences between the Lithuania, Northern Ireland and Bulgaria with zero points. Of course, Lithuania and Northern Ireland playing only, uh, playing only one game in this group. Next, it's going to be for Switzerland. It will be Lith it will be Finland um, at home, as I mentioned in the friendly early on. For Lithuania, it will be against Italy at home. And for Bulgaria, it will be for Bulgaria, it will be the next game for them in this in these qualifiers will be against Northern Ireland away uh, from home. Uh, moving on, of course, and from group uh, and from Group C to Group F, of course, Denmark thrashed Moldova eight um, nil. You know, complete like completely annihilated Moldova. A well deserved victory for Denmark five nil in the first half. It was really, like, it was a terrific performance. It was a stamp, I think, of dominance in this group. Um, for Denmark, of course, 18 shots, half of them almost on target, really. Uh, and, of course, 11 shots, 8 from them are in the net. So that is effectiveness and efficiency at its very best. Marcus Ingvartsen getting a couple of goals for himself. Uh, Michael Mikael Damsgaard getting goal, uh, goals for himself. Kasper Dahlberg with a couple of goals. Jan Stiger Larsen for, with a couple of goals as well. Um, you know, Christine Eriksen was on the bench. He was introduced late. Simon Kier as well. Um, you know, it was pretty pedestrian and pretty, I think, convincing performance, I would say, from Denmark. I feel not convinced with an 8-0 win. As weak as the opponent could be, I don't know what could convince you, really. Also, we had defeated uh, Farrow Island 3-1 in the same group, so you assume they're going to be a little bit of a push and pull between Denmark and Austria for the qualifying spot. The automatic qualifying spot on the top of the group. Um, Austria, of course, with a three goals to one. In fact, it was Faroe Island who hit first by Sonny Nadstad in the 90th, 19th minute. But definitely, uh, Austria had more uh, firepower, I would say, to equalize Alexander Dragovic in the uh, half an hour mark from the Stefan Line assist. Equalizes then Christoph Baumgartner, the uh, Hoffenheim player, adds the second goal. Sasek Ladzic, the Stuttgart player, adds the third goal. It was a Bundesliga. Bundesliga showing for uh, Austria 3-1. It was in the first half. Everything was done and dusted. And the assist, by the way, for that third goal was from David Alaba. Um, so there's some Bundesliga real connection for you. So Austria now with four points behind Denmark, uh, who all have six points, of course. Scotland with two points from another draw against Israel in the group. Far Island. Israel and Moldova with all with one point. Next in this group for Austria, it will be against North Macedonia. It will be against Denmark, in fact, at home. Of course, the next game after that is going to be against North Macedonia in the European Championship. A Faroe Island, it will be against Scotland. Um, you know, it will be against Scotland um, away from home for Scotland, as I mentioned. For Denmark, it will be hosting Israel in the next, uh, it will be hosting, um, or traveling to Austria in the next fixture. And for Moldova, it will be hosting Israel in that group. Group I is next, and we have, of course, Albania and England in that group, kicking off early with England defeating Albania 2-0. A host of changes, of course, will def was made for this one from uh, Gary Sadgate's side, mostly, um, you know, Calvin Phillips starting, Declan Rice getting a start, Harry Kane getting start, he didn't get one in the first one, um, you know, it was a pretty modified side, Luke Shaw had a start, and he was terrific, I think he deserved... He's got up thoroughly and he proved it, I think, with a great performance. A great performance that not only was, you know, um, just a good performance all in all, but it was a performance accompanied with an assist for Harry Kane in the first goal in the 38 minute after a spell in the first half where England looked almost almost unable to break down the Albanian defence in the first half. There was not a lot of pressure from Albania, but definitely had a terrific defensive performance for the most part until they cracked under pressure. The 38th minute goal from Harry Kane. It was a, like a classic Harry Kane goal, really. Uh, the cross from Shaw and the header from Harry Kane. Then the second goal in the 63rd minute from Chelsea's brightest star, Mason Mount, and beautifully placing it past the uh, Albanian goal 
goalkeeper. And of course, the assist was from Harry Kane. He's the captain. He's the man in England. He's really returning to form at the moment. And of course, this national team trip, I think, should be a good motivator for him because his stock has fallen a little bit in the Premier League, although there's a lot of demand on him. But in terms of his performances this season, I think they dropped a while. So maybe it's going to be sort of reloading, recharging the batteries for Harry Kane in this international break to beat, uh, to be himself once again with Tottenham and maybe lead them into a late surge for a top four finish in the Premier League. Um, you know, six points for England. Uh, you know, undisputedly a couple of games that they should have won and they won pretty comfortably indeed. Seven goals to nil in aggregate for both games. Six points and ahead, of course, of both Hungary and Poland. Both of them defeating their opponents with the same result. Poland defeating Andorra 3-0. Lewandowski scoring twice this time. Three goals already in these qualifiers for him. And he should be, I think, thinking legitimately about being the top scorer in this competition, considering that they will have San Marino twice in this qualifiers. They will have Andorra again, and they will have Albania twice. So you fancy him getting a couple of goals for himself as well. Even against Hungary and England, I, I wouldn't really doubt him getting a couple of goals. A goal in the half an hour mark from Robert Lewandowski, then a goal in the 50, 55th mark from Robert Lewandowski again. And then, of course, Svidersky in the 88th minute, making it 3-0. Again, completely bossed by Poland. 15% was the possession for Andorra. It was ridiculous. The um, the amount of you know the amount of ball that you know uh, you know Poland have in the in the whole game overall Poland played you know 685 passes I mean it is normal but considering that you know Andorra had 15% of possession. This was really an effective game for Poland, really. So that, that means that not a lot of ball was wasted in the back. They were always trying to score, try to score as much as possible, but definitely they were allowed only three. But it was, again, a victory for Poland that will take them behind Hungary, just behind on goal difference just because they drawn against each other in the first game 3-3 three, three, of course and that was in uh, you know that was supposedly in Hungary um, in, in Hungary so four points for both and speaking of Hungary they defeated San Marino 3-0 I mean who can who could not win against San Marino realistically like if San Marino had a B team and played against the A team the B team of San Marino would beat the A team of San Marino and would beat it comfortably and the first team of San Marino would not score I'm um, um, I'm sorry, but I really feel bad for this team. Seriously, I really feel bad for San Marino. Whoever faces them just drops them and completely goes away on its own. Five from England and now three from Hungary. And you really expect them to be... I mean, by the way, whoever's going to be listening to this, I'm willing to throw a bat right now. I really... I'm betting that San Marino is not going to be scoring for the whole qualifiers. That means the next... Eight games for those qualifiers, and that bet is continuous as long as the podcast is here, and as long as I am here, that bet is continuous. I bet that it won't score past two goals if they ever can, if they ever scored, if they ever scored, they won't score past two goals. And I'm gonna even go bold, and I'm, I'm gonna say that they won't score for the whole qualifiers. I mean. I, do, I, I really, I really feel sorry for them. I really feel bad for them. They are a country the size of, of a, not just a state. They're the size of a of a government, really, of a governor of a governorate, really, in Tunisia, in a small city in Africa, like it's maybe small town even. But you know why? Why the embarrassing themselves in these qualifiers anyway? Um, you know this group, I think, is pretty interesting. When you look at it anyway, let's we gotta get off of the San Marino boat. Uh, the next game for San Marino indeed will be against, um, you know, will be against uh, Poland, uh, be against Albania, sorry, and will be, you know, at home. So maybe, maybe they'll score a goal. Maybe they'll prove me wrong in the first time, but definitely is gonna be, uh, you know, I, I think it's gonna be another drubbing because Albania are really, really strong um, compared to them. For Hungary, the next game is gonna be against Andorra, uh, of course course away from home for Poland is going to be is going to be the biggest I think game in this competition is going to be against England away from home and that is going to be really really interesting one to watch for uh, you know for Gareth Southgate and for the um, and for, for Poland of course this is going to be I think the stern test really for the Polish side and for the English side in this group uh, for the Polish side under Paolo Sousa and for the English side of Gareth Southgate definitely a game that I'm going to be watching thoroughly and closely. 
Um, the standings in this group at the moment, England with 6 points, of course, Hungary and Poland 4 points, Albania 3 points, Andorra and San Marino no points at all. And of course, finishing up from Group J, and it was the group of Germany, of course, speaking of them. Um, you know, kicking off early, Armenia defeated Iceland 2-0, and surprisingly enough, Armenia are second to Germany in this group, only one goal away from Germany in terms of the total of the group. I mean, if Germany didn't, I mean, if, if, if Armenia won 3-0, they would be on level terms literally with Germany, and it would be hard to decide who's going to be top of the group, really. But again, anyway, Armenia with the two goals to nil victory against Iceland. Iceland, who really looked just like a ghost from the great team that they had in 2016 and in 2018, I think it pretty much... I mean, it's still the same lineup, pretty much, for Iceland, but he's the same generation, really, if you look at it. It's Ingerson, Skullison, Gudmundsen, Bjarnason, Gunnarsson, the captain, the goalkeeper, Halderson. I think it's the same sort of side that qualified to the Euros in 2016, that had that deep run in the Euros in 2016, and that had that great qualifiers in 2018 and won and, and went to the World Cup. But definitely, it is not the same sort of spirit, at least, from this side. Two goals from Tigran Barsegan in the 53rd minute and Koren Bayraman in the 74th minute making um, Armenia victorious in this one 2-0 against Iceland definitely deserved one and Armenia might be dark horse to at least get to the playoffs like if anything they could get to the playoffs from this group and might have a chance of qualifying to the World Cup eventually in the same group North Macedonia managed to just to drop Liechtenstein completely 5-0 in uh, in their game of course you know it was an easy one for North Macedonia, Tchaikovsky with a couple of goals in his body with a goal, Elgif Elmas, Napoli's man with a goal, and uh, Elijah Nestorovsky, um, Hellas Verona's man with a goal as well to make it 5 0 for North Macedonia. Four goals coming in the second half, of course, in this one. Um, you know, North Macedonia taking the third spot with Romania at three points for each, Armenia six points, and Germany six points, of course. And Germany, we're coming to them now. They, um, you know, it was a hard win against Romania. It wasn't. It wasn't the, exactly the. It wasn't exactly the easiest of games against Romania. But obviously, Germany had the job done. Eventually, the first fifteen minutes, I think, were a bit tricky. The last fifteen minutes were a little bit scary. Outright, I think, for Germany, Romania had a couple of opportunities with the changes they made as well. They had a couple of situations where they could have scored. They could have easily made it count for them. But Romania couldn't finish really, and they couldn't have the proper finish for them. As for Germany, all in between, I think, was a control from Germany, intensity, no lot of changes were made for the side that beat Iceland, pretty much remained the same remained the same side, and I really doubt that it's good. The The amount of options on the bench was pretty limited for low, which I think was pretty weird. Um, you know, not resting the Bayern players, most of the Bayern players, the likes of, you know, Kimmich and Goretzka and Sane and Serge Gnabry, and not just that, but also adding to them, um, you know, um, not resting the likes of Timo Werner, really, who is not having a good season altogether, didn't have the best of moments when he was introduced. Serge Gnabry with a 17th minute goal, and that was that for Germany. It really is a game that doesn't, you know, it's not worth talking about it a lot because it hasn't a lot happened into it aside from the goal, really. And, you know, again, Romania had a couple of opportunities late on, a couple of opportunities early on, but they couldn't score either side of uh, of, uh, of the halves, really. And it was the um, and it was the goal from McNabry that was the only difference in this game. Although Germany, to be fair, they should have scored more than that. At least two or three other goals. Germany, six points. Armenia, six points. North Macedonia, three points. Romania, three points. Iceland with zero points, as well as Liechtenstein. For Germany next, it will be, of course, hosting North Macedonia at home. For Romania, it will be uh, travelling to face Armenia at home. And, of course, for Liechtenstein, it will be facing uh, will be facing Iceland uh, at home for them in this next round. Um, thanks for me, uh, from me to you. Thanks, of course, for watching slash listening to the episode. Always with HD of the BSP. Like, share, comment on this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, enable notifications to receive all all the updates from the episodes of the podcast, of course. Follow us on social media. I'm myself, PSP, on Twitter, page, pod on Instagram. Listen on Google Podcasts, Spotify, or any other platform. And until next time, I will see you soon. Goodbye.